Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with another COVID update. Oh, I haven't done one in about a week and a half or so. So today I thought what we would talk about is the new vaccine. And, you know, now we've got a couple different choices. Are there one better than another? Um, we're going to talk about that. We're also going to ask the question, you know, is it time Texas just lifted every restriction? Smart? or dumb and we're going to talk about that and it probably is the latter but and i'll explain why and also then finally i've got a question for those of you who decided not to get vaccinated either you're you have anti-vaccine beliefs or you're you're not not convinced about the current vaccines i'm going to ask a question i'm curious to get some input in short uh numbers uh, well i guess i should explain i'm dr jeffrey galvin i'm a board certified emergency medicine physician i also run a functional a precision medicine clinic in Charlotte. I've been doing updates on COVID and, and health uh, starting about a year ago when all this started. I still work in the emergency department, but I also work uh, in my clinic as well. Uh, we've been posting these video videos for a while. I usually start with numbers worldwide, 114 million cases of COVID, two and a half million deaths here in the US, 29 million, 520,000 deaths. Uh, vaccination numbers, I think we're, we're approaching 90 or 100 million uh, in the in the U.S. alone and probably close to 300 million worldwide. Important to note, really almost no serious side effects at all from any of those you know, millions and millions and millions and millions of people have been vaccinated. So first off, J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson, uh, was approved to have their one-shot vaccination uh, uh, go to go live, I guess, starting today. Now we've got three currently, Moderna, the Pfizer, BioNTech, and now Johnson & Johnson. What's the difference with the Johnson & Johnson? Well, it's a little bit more of a traditional vaccine and it only needs one shot, which is great. It doesn't need to be deeply refrigerated, meaning it doesn't need deep freezing, just be kept in a refrigerator. And it doesn't have to be reconstituted. The Pfizer one actually, you've got to sort of mix it up when you get it. This comes ready to use out of the vial. So very convenient, very similar to what we normally use vaccines for. Now, it, how does it compare? Well, generally, it's about 66% effective against you know, preventing COVID, uh, severe symptoms, death, and severe illness uh, versus 92, 94% for Moderna and Pfizer. Now, we probably don't want to get wrapped up too much in those numbers because for folks that are at low risk, you know, younger, healthier people, just a little bit of protection is, you know, is is really good, and they're probably equivalent. When we're talking about younger populations. The five, the J and J one is ideal for transient populations, people who are homeless, people who are live in rural areas without transportation, um, people who are, you know, have a really difficult time for whatever reason, socially, economically, mentally, physically that they getting a second dose of a vaccine at a very specific you know window of time might be difficult so the j and j vaccine is very effective and it's going to be great for those populations however if you're over 60 if you look at the fda data you know it's only 42 percent effective against moderate covid and in 57 or 58 percent um effective against sort of severe critical COVID. So if you're older than 60 and you've got comorbidities, you know, it may not be the best choice. Um, you know, there, somebody early on in the pandemic, one of the vaccine researchers said, you know, the, the vaccine you want is the last best one. And I, you know, I think that the J&J &J vaccine is very good. If you get an opportunity to get it, it's going to be great for you. But if you, you know, if you're older and you've got comorbidities, it may not be the best of the three choices. And so I, I would say that if you if you don't have any other choice to get anything but that one get it if you've got concerns and you've got underlying medical problems and you're older than 60 years old i would personally you know if that was my parents i would i want them to get the one of the other two um you know, data is preliminary my you know as i always say do your own research this is my read on on the the subject um but it's you know it's a it's a very good vaccine by vaccine standards um the Moderna and Pfizer ones just happen to be phenomenal based on their efficacy because um, most vaccines are, are you know, not 90% effective like those two are. But again, it's not a bad vaccine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate to get it if that's your choice. You know, it, it's somebody, uh, I don't know who gave me this analogy, but if you're going into a gunshot, a gunfight, and you have the option of, of getting a, wearing a bulletproof 
vest that's 66% effective versus no bulletproof vest, which one would you rather go into the, the gunfight with? You know, you, you take the, the one that you, the, with the vest. Um, the next thing is, you know, we're starting to see all these states opening up because our numbers are dropping. You know, cases are dropping, hospitalizations are dropping, deaths haven't really dropped, but we've talked about that. Deaths lag, cases. So all those big surges we had after Christmas, a lot of those people that got really sick are probably starting to die now. So that, that's not that um, surprising that deaths haven't, you know, kind of gone down all that much. However, this is the concern, is that we know that by the end of this month, we think those more contagious variants are going to basically be the predominant variants in the country. Now, they are very, very contagious. They are so contagious that probably cloth masks don't even do any, any good. That's why they're recommending double masking. Or, or not, I've been telling people for a while, wear an N95 or a KN95 because these new variants are very nasty and they're very, very contagious. Now, they grow exponentially. And you know what that means? You know, it's like one to two to four to eight. 16. And so these variants are, are growing that way. And the problem with exponential growth is that at the very beginning, the, the growth curve is relatively flat. And then all of a sudden it goes up, you know, almost vertically, logarithmically. And that's the concern is that we open up, you know, we tell people you don't need to wear masks and what's, you know, they're going to stop taking precautions. We're only human, right? We're going to be like, it's over with. And we're going to be doing that in the face just when all these new variants are just starting to take over and we're going to remove everybody's protection at the same time and you can see where that's going to is a potential disaster and i think you know if we could hold off for a month or two get more people immunized we can probably avoid that but we are going to run into the same problem we ran into remember what happened in the in the uh the summertime that arizona and other states opened up right and what happened we had a huge spike and lots and lots of people got hurt and killed so my feeling is that it is firmly in the dumb column to open up restrictions until we really get a good handle on what's happening with these new variants, which I think is going to take a month or two. I think a month or two from now, we'll have good data and say, yeah, you can do it or you can't. But right now, we're, we're, we're leaving ourselves very vulnerable um, to some bad surges, and, and we don't want that again. I'm, I'm sick of dealing that with that in the emergency department. Last thing, if I've got a question for those of you who've decided not to get immunized. So remember, right now, about 50% of Americans say they're not going to get immunized. Well, I want to know why. Um, I'm not casting judgment. I've got, we've gotten, certainly got some people that post all the time here who are very, very anti-vax. Now, they believe a lot of stuff that um, they can't back up with any science. I keep asking them if you've looked at my replies to these people, and all they do is post videos, um, videos of discredited scientists. I, if you have some science to show me, um, that's great. But... You know, I think what we've shown is hundreds of millions of doses of vaccine given throughout the world with very, very few problems. You know, people get those immune effects from the vaccine. Um, and, you know, we've had 60% decrease in mortality in nursing homes in the, in the months since we started immunizing. Who are the first people we immunized? Nursing homes. Um, we, you look at the data from Israel, precipitous drops in mortality because they're, they're vaccinating huge numbers of people. So we've got vaccines that are safe and they are effective, but if you still decided you're not going to get vaccinated, I'm curious to know what the thought process is um, and what information you feel like you need to kind of pull the trigger and get yourself protected. Um, again, not casting any judgment. I'm just curious because there's, there's quite a few of us and realize that it's going to be difficult for us to get through this if half of us are vulnerable. You know, it's, it's hard to really lift these restrictions if, if you got half your population still vulnerable. And it's probably less than half because people have been exposed. Anyway, I'm gonna end it there. Um, I'm actually getting a plane for the first time in, a, in over a year today. Um, I'm going on a, a, a quick trip out to Utah. Um, so it'll be interesting. I'll, I'll see if I can do a, a video from there. Um, I haven't been on a plane. It'd be, you know, see what the new world looks like. Anyway, everybody stay safe, wash your hands, wear your masks, look after yourselves, your families, and care about the other guy, look out for those around you. Have a great day.